welcome to another fantastic Java programming Math 130 lecture on video with yours truly, Professor Mimi Rasky. Today we're going to be looking at counters and accumulators, which are two very important things you need to know about when you are using loops in your program. So let's talk about counters first, and counters are going to keep track of the number of times an event happens. And when we get to accumulators, cumu accumulators are usually used to keep track of running totals, for example, sums. So with counts, there's a lot of applications for that. There's times when we're going to ask ourselves, hey, how many times did something happen? So let's take a look at an easy counter example first, which isn't on your lecture notes. This is just to start us off. So when you have what's known as counter-controlled repetition, you need to first of all make sure that you have the name of your control variable. I usually just call it counter. If you're going to use your counter, you must initialize it to some value. Traditionally, counters are initialized to zero, although you can initialize it to one or whatever you need. And then you're going to need the condition somewhere in your code that tests for the final value of your control variable so you know when to quit looping. And then, of course, within the body of your loop, you need to increment or decrement, as the case may be, uh, what your, uh, so your control variable is modified each time you pass through the loop. So here's an easy example. Let's say you initialize your counter variable to 1 right here. So when your counter is less than or equal to 10, and right now that's true because counter is a 1, so if I keep track of counter over here, it's a 1 right now, and so this condition is true, it's going to print out the value of the counter. So it's just going to print out 1, and then we update the counter with a plus plus. And it doesn't matter in this line if the plus plus occurs before or after the counter name, since there are no other uh, uh, types of um, arithmetic going on in that particular statement. So counter is now a 2, and you're going to loop back around and check your while loop condition again. Is the counter still less than or equal to 10? Yeah, it's a 2, yes. So you're going to print it out, which is a 2, and then you're going to do plus plus counter to a 3. Then you're going to loop around and check once again. Is your counter still less than or equal to 10? Why, yes, it is. So I hope you get the pattern here. And if you keep going, this is just going to keep going. Let's go up to, say, the second to the last uh, line of uh, looping. You're going to have your counter plus plus. Let's say that made it from an 8 to a 9. You're going to loop around. Is counter still less than or equal to 10? So your output, you had all those. And so you're going to say yes. So you're going to print it out. So you'll print out the 9. And then you'll update counter plus plus to a 10. Loop around. Is counter still less than or equal to 10? Well, yes, 10 is less than or equal to 10. That's true. So you'll print out the counter. And then you'll do a counter plus plus. So now the counter is an 11. And when you loop around, excuse me, um, you check your condition. Is counter still less than or equal to 10? False. So it just falls through to whatever is next in your code. So this is just an easy example of using a counter. Now let's take a look at a little bit more tricky of an example. That's the one in your lecture notes. So suppose we want to know how many integer factors a number has. This is a good mathematical example. For example, the number 10 has four factors, 1, 2, 5, and 10. Why? Because all of those numbers divide 10 evenly. So we're going to look at a loop that's going to keep track of the number of divisors that 10 has. So the counter variable that we're going to use is going to be called factors. So you don't always name your counter variable counter. In this particular case, the counter variable will be named factors. So then what? Well, we're going to declare our counter variable. And note that counters are always going to be ints 
integer data type. So we're initializing our counter of factors to zero because we haven't found any factors yet. And so then we're going to go ahead and declare a couple of other integers, the number that we're going to check to see how many divisors it has, in this case 10. And then we're going to start our divisor at 1, and that number is going to be uh, basically another counter that's keeping track of the number of times we're looping, because the divisor is going to go increase every time. So let's walk through this program by hand, shall we? So when I walk through code by hand, I like to keep track of all of my variables off in the side margin. And if there are any changes, I keep track of those as well. So we'll start the while. Check this condition. Is it true? Is the divisor less than or equal to the number right now? Yeah, 1 is less than or equal to 10. True. Check the if condition. Is number mod divisor equal equal 0? What they're asking there is 10, that's our number, mod the divisor, which is currently a 1, is that remainder when we divide 10 by a 1 equal to 0? Well, uh, check it. 1 goes into 10 10 times. And the remainder is yes, 0. So that's true. So we're going to update the factors. That means, yay, we found one of the factors of the number 10. And so we're going to update that counter variable, the factors, is keeping track of how many divisors that 10 has. And now we're going to increment the divisor. So he's now a 2. We're going to loop around and do the check. Is the divisor still less than or equal to the number? Is 2 still less than or equal to 10? True. Do the if statement. Is number mod the new divisor equal equal 0? So in other words, if you divide 10 by 2, will that remainder be 0? So now what we're asking is we're asking is 10 mod 2 equal equal to 0? Well, I claim it is because if we do, again, this little side uh, arithmetic, I just like to do that. You may not need to do it, but 2 goes into 10 uh, evenly, and yes, the remainder uh, when you divide it by 2 is 0. So that's true. So we're going to update the factors counter again. So in other words, that line gets executed, factors plus plus. Then we come out here, and we're still inside the while loop. The divisor goes to increment to a 3. We loop around. Is divisor still less than or equal to number? Sure, 3 is still less than or equal to 10. So that's true. So go ahead and do the while loop again. So now we're asking the new question, is the remainder when you divide 10 by 3 going to equal 0? Well, no, it won't, because when you divide 10 by 3, unfortunately, uh, it doesn't divide evenly and your remainder is not equal to 0. So that if statement is false, so we're not going to do factors plus plus. But we're going to come down here and still do divisor plus plus. So now we're going to go around again to check to see if divisor less than or equal to number. It is. 4 is less than or equal to 10. Check. Does number divided or mod divisor equal equal 0 now? Well, I'm afraid not because 10 mod 4 is not equal to 0. That's false. So do not do a factors plus plus. 4 is not a divisor of 10, but increment your divisor now to a 5. So now the uh, divisor is a 5. You're going to loop around. Check your can while loop condition. Is 5 still less than or equal to 10? True. Check your if statement. Is 10 mod 5 equal equal 0? I claim it is because when you divide 10 by 5, you do in fact get a remainder of 0. And if you don't believe that, check it with a calculator. So that's going to be true. And so what does that mean? Factors plus plus again. So you're going to go ahead and increment the factors. That's your counter, counting the number of divisors, because we just found another divisor of 10. 5 is the new divisor. And then you're going to do divisor plus plus, and divisor will now be a 6. Come back around to the while loop. Is the divisor still, uh, is it still less than or equal to the number? Yes. Okay. Is the if statement true? Is 10 mod 6 equal equal 0? No, because 10 is not evenly divided by 6. So don't increment the factors counter, but do increment the divisor. So now divisors is a 7. Swing around. Is 7 still less than or equal to 10? True. Now check the if statement. Does 
10 mod 7 equal equal 0? No, because 7 doesn't divide 10 evenly. Don't increment the factors. Do increment the divisor. He's now an 8. Check the while loop back again. Is 8 less than or equal to 10? True. Check the if statement. Is 10 modulo 8 equal equal 0? No, it is not, because 8 does not divide 10 e evenly, so don't increment the factors counter. Do increment your divisor, swing back around, check your while loop, is 9 less than or equal to 10? True. Check your if, is 10 mod 9 equal equal 0? No, it isn't, because 9 doesn't divide 10 evenly. So don't increment the factors, do increment the divisor, we're almost done, the divisor is 10, swing back around, is divisor less than or equal to number? True, 10 is less than or equal to itself. Check the if statement, is 10 mod 10 equal equal 0? Yes, because 10 divides itself evenly. That means you are going to do a factors plus plus, and a divisor now turns into an 11. When you swing back around, divisor now is an 11, and 11 is not less than or equal to 10, so then you would fall through. I have this already on NetBeans for us, so we can go and see uh, this example here. So here's the num of divisors, and I already have the code here. So I added one extra line, though, here. If you'll notice, I added the line uh, after the while loop's complete to print out the number of uh, divisors we have. So if I go over here and run the code, and uh, ignore that because there's no errors, it'll tell me the number 10 has four divisors down here in the output display. And that's exactly right. We know that. Just for fun, let's change our number and run it again. Let's, let's just uh, go ahead and figure out how many divisors does the number 360 have? Now, 360 is a really great number because <laughs> it has a lot of divisors. Let's just find out how many. So if I run this code again with a new number that we're checking, hmm, the number 360 has 24 divisors. Can you name them all? That concludes this portion of the lecture. So tune in for the next video on accumulators.